Are you looking to make effective online quizzes for your classroom? Today, we'll go over six steps you can take to make a seamless transition to online quizzes. I'm Alex here with JotForm. Let's get started. Teachers don't like giving out quizzes any more than students like taking them. It takes a lot of time to create, copy, and grade quizzes. Creating your assessment online can make the entire process much easier. The first thing you should do is define your goal for each quiz. You need to clearly define what you're testing and justify why you're quizzing your students. Mary Ellen Weimer, Professor Emerita of Teaching and Learning at Penn State Berks, suggests giving your students an online quiz daily right before class starts. That way you can assess what you need to focus on that day in class. And Nate Cornell, Associate Professor of Cognitive Psychology at Williams College, quizzes students daily to ensure that they've done the reading for class. He uses quizzes to make sure that they've come prepared for class. But to alleviate some pressure, each quiz is only worth 1% of a student's overall grade. Understanding why you are giving out quizzes will help you to better create them. Next, you should provide students with the tools to succeed. The best part about giving digital quizzes is that you can make all of the necessary materials available online. Digital learning consultant Casey Bell suggests providing students with detailed directions, the rubric, a due date, collaborative expectations, directions on how to turn the assignment in, what to do if they finish early, and what to work on next. Make sure that the materials and link to the quiz are all available in one place and that everything works properly. You could create a blog or Dropbox folder for all of the materials or send everything to your students via email. The third step is writing some great quiz questions. According to Julie Schell, Director and Assistant Clinical Professor at the University of Texas at Austin, your questions should be directed at what you want students to actually learn from your quiz. Shell also recommends not using verbatim questions. The answer shouldn't be something that students can find in the text and repeat back word for word. You want them to actually understand the material, not just memorize it. Instructional designer Scott Winstead offers some tips for creating quiz questions. He recommends keeping questions simple and varying your question types. Students shouldn't have to decipher what your question is. Keep them as straightforward as possible. And varying the types of questions asked will both challenge and engage your students. Next, make cheating on quizzes difficult. The one problem with giving out digital quizzes is that it's much easier for students to cheat. Whether they are completing the quiz at home or in the classroom, students have the opportunity to look up the answers on their computer. Though it's harder to prevent cheating, it's not impossible. Jody Freeney, COO at Respondus, outlined six ways you can prevent students from cheating during their quizzes. You can offer quizzes more often. If each quiz has a lesser value and little impact on their overall grade, then students are less incentivized to cheat. Remind your students that no phones or other devices should be within reach during the quiz. Read your school's honor code before the exam. Randomize the order of the quiz questions, that way students get different questions at different times. Include more subjective, opinion-based questions so students will have to come up with their own answers. And finally, use a lockdown browser during the quiz so students are not able to do internet searches. Next deliver thoughtful feedback in a timely manner. Digital quizzes allow for teachers to provide automated feedback for each individual question, which can be delivered as soon as an answer is submitted. Feedback is a crucial part of the assessment. Students should be informed on what they missed so they know what topics they understand and what topics they should review again. When you send feedback immediately, it saves time for students and teachers as you are able to find gaps in learning much sooner. And lastly, Keep it fresh. Quizzes with the same format can quickly become boring to both you and your students. Mix things up by using various types of questions like multiple choice, fill in the blank, and open-ended questions. Another way to mix up your quizzes is by utilizing the wager exam. The method is suggested by Nick Curian, a former public school teacher. Using this method, students can choose how many points they want to wager on each question. If they are sure of an answer, they can wager more points, and if they are unsure, they can wager fewer points. 
This also provides you with information on which topics students are confident in and what they need to work on. If a student underbids on a question, then you know that they are guessing and need more help with that topic. So, to review, digital quizzes are a great way to save you time and resources in the classroom. They can also greatly help you to better teach your students. To create a digital quiz, keep these steps in mind. Start by defining a goal for each quiz. Understanding why you're giving out a quiz will help you with formulating questions later. Provide your students with all the tools they'll need, including instructions, a rubric, and important documents. Now, write your questions. They should be straightforward and tailored to what you want your students to learn. Make cheating difficult by incorporating a lockdown browser so students can't look up the answers. Give your students thoughtful feedback on quizzes so they can see where they went wrong and how they can improve. And keep your quizzes fresh. Change what types of questions you write and try out different formats. Overall, remember to keep it simple. A digital form creator, email, and some online storage is all you need to digitize your classroom assessments. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope we were able to help you out. I'm Alex here with JotForm. Bye-bye for now.